five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Tonight, here on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, there's that face. That wizened face in her elderly years has a certain wisdom about it. Oh, yeah, right. So it's such a wise old woman. (laughs) When I was married to her, she was just another hippie. Anyway... (laughs) <laughs> no, no, that's wrong. I was never a hippie. I was a beatnik. Well, yeah, but I, I have a picture of you where you're dressing more like a, like, you know, the problem is, I got to tell you, this is Ronnie Bennett, by the way, in case you didn't notice, that's my ex-wife, my second ex-wife. Um, and she, uh, um, uh, I have pictures of you uh, wearing what I consider hippie garb, but what I noticed is that throughout the years, you had to dress to the times because you couldn't buy clothes of any other kind. It was like I wore, I actually, I hated platform shoes, but I actually had to wear a pair because that's all you could buy at one point. You know, they do that. You know, the opposite problem is that yeah. every woman, do ask any woman you run into, we can't get clothes. Our clothes don't have pockets like men's do. So we can't put our cell phone in our pocket. It has to be in our hand or in our handbag. So you never can find it. I'm going to go back to wearing a watch because I can never find it in my handbag and I don't know what time it is wherever I am. Uh, and I think that's a a giant um, problem, I guess, for women. But clothes manufacturers are the ones that make that decision. And you bring it up with any group of women and all of them will say, yes, yes, pockets. Yes, yes, pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, um, um, yeah, men have always had pockets, uh, and it makes it pretty easy. But a lot of coats you buy today have little pockets in them for phones. I mean, they kind of f- take a phone. I have like I'm have. i not talking about a special coat. Yeah. I'm talking about normal, everyday clothes, okay. a sweater, a jacket, a pair of pants. No pockets for women, or so tiny you can't put, if you tried to put your phone in, it would fall out. Yeah. Just, well, it's really irritating. Well, you have one advantage. You don't have a prostate. So I I consider that an advantage for women. And how is yours this week? Well, it's, <laughs> I start my radiation on Monday. Oh, I thought you'd done it. We were going to no. hear all about it today. Oh, no, no, no. I, I have, I, it's really funny. Starting Monday, I have radiation every other day for five days. Okay, so for a week and a half, I'm going to. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then Monday and Wednesday. Sunday? No, I think it's Monday and Wednesday. I I think they actually let the radiation machine take a day off. I don't know. But anyway, and then uh, they do the seeds. But in between, I have to go month, Tuesday to my dentist because she found a fractured filling in a back tooth that may be too close to a nerve and we may have to do a root canal. So what will happen is on Monday, I do radiation. Tuesday, I do root canal. <laughs> Wednesday, I do radiation Thursday. You know. Welcome to my life. Yes, welcome to Ronnie's I'll life. Tell you, what, you know, my rehab after three months is coming to an end on Tuesday. Yeah. And I have, in my old age and post-major surgery, I have about seven to eight hours a day that I'm functional, that I can think and I can write and I can go places yeah. and do things. Yeah. That's it. Most people have 15 or 16. I only have seven or eight. So then what happened, rehab comes along twice a week for the past three months. Yeah. And with the travel time and the workout time there and coming back, it takes four hours out of those two days. Yeah. So each one of them. So I'm losing eight, another eight hours a week out of my life that... All kinds of things don't get done because 
I still run out of en- energy by two two thirty. You still know? have it's you, and you up. still have a blog to put out. You you know you still have to maintain that. How about just the dishes and the laundry and clean up the house and meet a friend for lunch and that sort of thing? Something I've hardly seen. And I finally saw a friend I haven't seen in all this time on Friday for lunch. What is today? Saturday? Yes, yesterday for lunch, and it had been the longest time. So. I understand what you're up against. That you've got can somewhere to be every yeah. single day. <laughs> yeah. Well, can I can I say something which is uh, uh, very true? I, you know, I when you first said that the cancer had come back and all of that, uh, I expected to see a woman who, over the weeks that we would be talking, would be deteriorating. Every time we talk, you look better than the time before. Oh, I don't. I mean, I just look like an old lady, you know? No, you look uh, great. I mean, you, uh, you, 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 you're you, looking terrific. You're looking healthy. Well, the thing is that, you know, I, I think I've used this line with you. Yeah. Is that if I yeah. didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I have cancer. Right. Um, it's the COPD that is the bigger problem of yeah. dated living. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, in a couple of weeks, I've forgotten when exactly, I have a new test and see the oncologist, and I always start to get nervous when that's coming because who knows what the cancer has done, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you go through, I'm sure everybody who's been in my position, it's like that it is, I get a little pain here or somewhere, and oh my God, what's the cancer doing to me? <laughs> and there's no way to know, so you just have to move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh yeah. But it's always a little shadow back there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but it, but it, it you just you look terrific, you know. I, I and I don't know why it why why you aren't starting to look worse, you know. You I think, <laughs> I know. you know, yeah. it's, the day will come. I mean, you know, what are you going to say to me when that day comes? Well, I don't know. It may come for me earlier than it comes. I am, I have a funny feeling you may be around long after me. I just have that feeling. You know, I know. You know that doesn't. The feelings are. Well, you're gonna say, why is that? Uh, I Alex was supposed to call me today. Why isn't he calling? And then you're gonna finally call my number, and Marjorie will pick him and say, well, he had a heart attack last night. You know, I mean, I uh, had that happen. Many, and what kind of heart problems do you have? I don't have any that's gonna kill me. Yeah, that's right. I've I've had my heart checked. I have a stenosis, a mild stenosis, which he says if it keeps progressing at the rate it's been progressing, uh, I'll be dead at 150. <laughs> What's stenosis mean? It's a hardening of the uh, aorta. Oh, okay. It's a thickening not, of the... Of I mean, the, does, the but does that word only apply to a heart, or does it apply to other things? Uh, stenosis, uh, you can get... Uh, uh, Marjorie, I think, has stenosis in her back. So it's a medical term. It's a hardening. It's a, hard, it's, a, yeah, it's a hardening of something. Okay. Yeah. In this case, it's a mild aortic stenosis. Okay. okay, so whatever. Anyway, so I, you know, um, but I'm, I, I can use this in my court case. I, I, sorry, Judge, I have to take a break. I have cancer, you know, and then go do whatever I have to do. Uh, you know, you can use those as excuses. That and pull the senior card. That's always a good one, too. You know, no, I can't remember. I'm, uh, that was too long ago for me. You know me, I'm old. I don't remember, you know. What, I did something <laughs> wrong? I didn't know I was doing something wrong. Excuse me, I'm an old man. You know what? We're terribly lucky to be as healthy as we are, given all the, even the things that are wrong yeah. with us medically. We're very lucky at this. I mean, you're past 80, and I'm coming up on it in a little over a year. And, uh, you know, we're doing pretty well, given all the things that could happen. Yeah. Can I talk to you about something that happened to me today? I think yes. you might find this interesting. I'm at Costco. I'm wheeling my cart around. Where and is Costco in Manhattan? Uh, Costco is over on 117th Street and the uh, uh, East Side Highway. Oh, so you have to go way across town. Yeah, but it's not that big a deal. I'm, I'm there in oh. 10 minutes, okay, by cab or uh, lift or whatever I take. Anyway, um, I'm wheeling my cart around, and I'm, I'm turning an aisle, and I tap somebody else's cart that always happens uh, you know because especially in a crowded saturday costco you're gonna you do it during the week you know and you yeah, yeah i know but but yeah. that's not the story so i tap the cart and i just kind of move on because i've got my earphones on and i'm listening to my music and this guy starts yelling behind me 
you didn't say I'm sorry. <laughs> and I turn around, it's this black guy. And I go up to him and I said, what's your problem? He said, you didn't say you were sorry. I said, I just tapped your cart, sir. I, you know, he says, you're a racist. Oh, dear me. Okay. And I'm going, what? <laughs> How does tapping your cart possibly make me a racist? And he starts yelling at me. Yes, well, you're also an old coot. <laughs> you got called an old coot? Yeah, I, 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 I said, I, or funny. something like that, or an old fucker or something like that. And, and I said, but not only are you racist, but you're also an ageist. And I started yelling at him. I got in his face. And, the, you know, I got to tell you something. I, and I, I'm not being racist when I say this. I live in Harlem. I know this for a fact. A trait of black people, and this is not a racist trait, but a trait of black people is they don't like their space invaded. So if you tap their cart, everybody doesn't like their space. No, in more their so, more so. It's like you cannot. If it, I just tap the cart, if somebody just tapped my cart, I would go, "Oh, okay, somebody just tapped my cart." I, it wasn't like I slammed into him. Did it occur to you he might have been having a bad day? Did it occur to you he might be a racist and just hate white people? So I figure I'm going to start. I, I've decided I'm going to become a racist. Uh, because if I'm going to get accused of it, I want to get my money's worth. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because, I mean, God knows. I mean, I mean, I, I, I suppose I'm a racist from the standpoint that I'm white and I didn't grow up black, so I don't know what it's like to be black and walk around in black skin, but I can empathize. Um, and as you know, I never use that, that nasty word we're supposed to use because my father told me you don't use that word. That's the description of a black man who just left the room. Uh, and uh, so I never use that word. Is that what your father said? Yeah. Word. That's the description <laughs> you know, of a I black really man who it. just left miss, the room. I, of course, uh, I miss it too, and it's uh, been like... Four. So I never use that word. Is that what your father said? Yeah. yeah. That's the description you know, of a I black really man who just left the room. Of course, I miss it too, it's been like... So I never use that word. Because using that race card... In, on such a trivial matter, trivializes racism, <clears throat> even by a black person doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it was hardly a racist act that I tapped, by accident, his cart. And I didn't do it because he was black, you know. But now that I think about it, I probably did it because he was black. Anyway, you know, it, but what do you, what do you think? You ever have things like that happen? I mean, it's just... It just it just completely put off my whole day. Well, one of the things that's happened to me in my old age, and I've kind of noticed, yeah. is I shrug more at things that I used to get angry at. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, oh, God. You know, I, I don't have the, maybe it's it's down to very basic, like, I don't have the energy to react. I'm old. <laughs> well, you know, if I did more than just tap the guy, I would have said I was sorry. I mean, if I rammed into him, I certainly would have said I'm sorry. But I didn't. It wasn't even that. It was like just a tap, you know. And and it could have been because he stopped short or something like you gotta that. You got to let it go. Yeah, but no. All I'm saying is, it just it, it. What bothered me most of all was him trivializing being, you know, black racism by accusing somebody of being racist because they tapped his cart. I'm sorry, that's not the definition of racism. You know? <laughs> well, I, yeah, yeah, I think you have Yeah, a if point. a white person taps a black person's <laughs> card, he's definitely a racist. But, um, yeah, fuck you, you know. Can we talk about this stuff on your face? What's what? There's nothing on my face. Around here. This is my, this is my beard. I've always had this. I don't remember ever seeing it. You know what it is? It's, it, longer? It, no, it's it. No, it's the lighting. I'm because I have more lighting. You've never you've seen me more in shadow I before. Understand many, many, many men. I would say, at least half the men I ever lay eyes on these days yeah. have a mustache and then the same kind of, you know, beard that comes around your mouth like this. I think it's really unattractive. <laughs> and, no, I, I want to know why men think it's attractive. I have had this, Ronnie, for the last <laughs> 30 years. I think since I was doing radio in San Francisco, I had this this style beard. Well, I just never noticed it, but it's it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And when I was at WMCA, I had one, but I didn't do this part. So it went 
kind of like up like this, you know. You remember? No. Oh, well, I'll show, I'll show you pictures. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> you know, I've always had some kind of facial hair. And uh, I think we tend to do it when, we, when we're going. I, I, some people, bald people do it. Uh, basically, because it so to compensate for what's not on it, the top it, of well, your head. Well, it it just makes it, dra it draws attention, I guess, to the bottom of your face. You know, I I on the other hand, as it doesn't, we all know you're bald. <laughs> well, I don't. Anyway, uh, my hair here. Yeah. You know, this is kind of hanging out. Everything's a mess. This is what happens when you are bald from, in my case, chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And then when that's all over and it starts growing back, you just let it do whatever it does. And I haven't had a haircut since I was bald. It's just, I'm letting it grow. Yeah. And it's a mess and it's really hard to take care of. And I need to go have a haircut. And that seems a lot of work these days. I don't know why it's not me cutting it, but I'm thinking about Maybe I'll just have it shaved. I'll go back to being bald again. It's so easy. Yeah. You don't do anything. Well, I'll tell you, it's not as easy as you think because right now I'm getting to the point where I think I got to go get a haircut because I like to keep this very short because I learned long ago uh, a, a comedian I knew who's now deceased, he, he had the same thing where he was going bald and I used to wear my hair, a lot of hair here and a lot of hair down the back. And uh, he said, cut it all off. It's called preemptive baldness. <laughs> you know, it's more attractive to have a lot of short hair when you're bald than to have a lot of long hair, which then shows how bald you are, you know. And I started, I started cutting my hair very short, but, you know, I go a couple of weeks and then I forget about it, you know. You know, during the congressional hearings this week? Yeah. It, by the way, she's saying this week because we're doing this on a on a Saturday before. So, so I mean this previous week. The, well, whenever, the, during the hearings, yeah. Um, uh, at the rare times they took a close-up shot of Justice Roberts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see pictures, and they always do that formal picture of everybody who's on the Supreme Court. They take one every year. And a few other pictures they take of them. Mostly we don't, you know, we don't see lots of pictures like you do of movie stars or something. Mm -hmm. But you see them, and he looks like he's got a nice head of hair. Well, he was sitting up here on the bench. Yes. Above, I so saw he's it. looking like this, down at everybody. And he's got this giant bald spot on top. And I thought that was the oddest thing because his the rest of his head is really luxuriant hair. He's got a lot of hair elsewhere except that one little hole up well, here. Well, he, he, that's uh, some people bald that way. They bald in the what's called a bald pate. Okay. And then the front, there's a lot oh, of hair. Male baldness. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, male pattern baldness is more what I have, where it starts. It starts here and moves Who back. Who would know anymore? Huh? Who would know anymore? What would mean? I, I remember how it started. It started here. You remember, but nobody else does. First, first you recede, okay? And then just, it goes back. Now, some people, when they bald, do the bald pate. It's just the, the pate gets bald, right. but the front stays pretty full. Uh, I ch think I saw Chuck Schumer one day when he did this, and he has the bald pate, too. Yes. Yeah. And so do I. Really? It's not completely bald, but you can see through what little hair is there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't understand it, though. I have two, uh, two uh, uh, attorneys, and both of them are Jewish, and both of them have a luxurious head of hair. <laughs> so did your dad. My dad... No, my dad was receding. Ways, he was but receding. It was lots yeah. of beautiful hair. But I just, you know, I I think when you're Jewish, you should you you, you it's by law you should have to be bald. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but the, I'm I'm looking at these guys. I'm going well, maybe being an attorney. You know, and by the way, every attorney also had facial hair like I have of one sort or another. Every attorney in that in that uh, place, except, the judge didn't, but the the attorneys did. And I'm wondering why, and I think, you know, there was a thing for a time where movie directors all had beards. And uh, I think Steven Spielberg explained it once, that when you were a young director, especially, you grew facial hair to look older. In other words, to command a certain authority. Uh, but, uh, so that's the reason why a lot of, you know, Scorsese had a beard, uh, uh you know, Spielberg had a beard. They all, all the big major directors had beards. So Co Coppola, 
You don't have anything to say about well, that. Well, you know, because you don't know anything about growing a beard. Well, you will, though, if you live long enough. You get these little hairs. Well, my mother, my, teeny hairs my, my, my mother had this one hair when I finally took her to the, uh, the old folks' home, and they cleaned her up. They had to shave it. She had one hair, and I kept wanting to always go over and just pull out, but yeah. it was like down to here. One hair coming that out of her. happened to me once until the light was shining in, you know, through the window in the yeah. in the bathroom yeah. one day. What is that? And I thought just it was a loose hair fell out of my head. No, it was stuck to the end of my chin, and nobody had ever mentioned it to me. Yeah, well, I wonder, like, when it went bald, where did all my hair go? And I suddenly realized it went to my ears and my nose. <laughs> yes, that's true. You know? The ailments of old age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's it. Since we're on, this is being shown on your web page, too, uh, it's all in, in place with the theme that you have about aging, which... You know what it's really like to get old. Yeah, what it's really like to get old. Is there any? You know, you talk about that. What it's like to get old, and yet, is there any one template for what it's like to get old? I mean, doesn't everybody age in a different way? Well, there are certain things like most men go bald. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of women lose their hair. Mm -hmm. All slow down. We all lose muscle mass. Yeah. Um, we all spread out among all of us millions have different kinds of terrible diseases that afflict many of us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's um, th there are commonalities that because your body stops working as well. So all those kinds of things happen to us. Yeah, those yeah, are all yeah. we have in common. But the big thing we don't have in common is when they happen. We age at very different rates. Mm -hmm. There are 50-year-olds who are decrepit already and there are people in their 80s and 90s who are in great shape who was and, it? Who, who was uh, it? And, and there's no you know it, it's not there's not an age where certain things have at what time and when do you go gray some i started going gray in my mid-30s mm -hmm. you know, um other people i know people my age their hair is brown or whatever color it ever was it's never gone gray yet and yeah. they're well into their 70s and so on well, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I, I, they say baldness for men uh, comes from their, uh, their mother's father. If her, if my grandfather. I, I, I would not believe that for no, one second. No, they said that. No, my, not everybody. Because my father had a, had a fairly decent head of hair. My, my maternal grandfather <clears throat> was bald as a, as a, as a billiard cube, you know. So I think that's where I got it from. Well, you can believe anything you want. Well, yeah. Anyway, while we've still got some time here, yes. so you said you, you watched the uh, proceedings. I didn't get to see the, the, the impeachment proceedings because I was in court all day. Um, uh, and, uh, I'm not going to talk about that. You shouldn't do that because then everybody has is going to wonder what the hell was he in court for. You know, that's... Not a good idea you to no, no. leave people I, up in the air I, like I, that. I, well, because I murdered somebody and I'm defending myself, okay? No, yeah. it, it, the, the audience knows pretty much why I was there. No, uh, nobody knows. No, yes, because it's been an ongoing story on this program about what... The, not on uh, mine, not when it's on my... Well, not yeah. when it's on yours, but this, anyway, the point I'm saying is I was in court and I couldn't watch the proceedings... But every time I saw it, it looked like some guy being uh, boring everybody else standing in front of some marble. I don't think it, it was boring it, at yeah, all. You know? I think those, what are they, six or seven house managers mm -hmm. who were doing all the talking yeah. for the most yeah. I thought it was wonderfully put together that they really used videotape extremely well to make their points. There was, I think it was Wednesday night... I'm pretty sure it was Wednesday night when, um, oh, oh, does that show on your screen? Well, you, you're, now you have you have a uh, uh, um, light on your face, and I can see you have a mustache and a beard. Uh -huh. <laughs> a page came up that shouldn't come up, yeah. and did you see it? I mean, did it yeah. was it there on our screen? No, 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 no. Okay, no. Um, I just forgot to turn it off. I think. Yeah. At any rate, um, what's his name? Was it Schumer? Yeah. Who um, who just did a wonderful, strong, sensible, smart, 
pointed recap of the day of mm -hmm. what everybody and they did and they did what what lawyers do in court they made the whole thing a narrative of explaining all that happened yeah. using video clips wonderfully i just think they did a masterful job yeah and i and i i followed this so closely that i know most of what they were talking now, about and i wasn't bored were they doing a masterful job because you agreed with them or was it, no, I'm not talking about substance. I'm talking about presentation. Well, what I'm saying is, is that if I if I, if I if I if I were to go to, if I were go to go to a Republican, they might say they did a terrible job. You know, that's they did what I was talking about. Yeah. Of course, they're going to say that. Yeah. Um, but they don't know anything about television production, and these folks and the Democrats obviously do, or they had somebody. Um, on somebody advising them. Plus that part, I think they're all attorneys or all but one or two. Yeah. And they know how to deliver a di a, a, a story right. in a court, which is essentially what they're trying to do. Right. And make it clear and don't get into the weeds too far that everybody can't understand legal phrases or anything like that. And in that sort, they did a, in that way. They did a, just a wonderful job. They were just. I don't expect him to be convicted. I think that our country is so far gone down the road of whatever not democracy is, uh, and that the that that steady forty percent or whatever that support Trump would support him if he did that. What is now. You know, the famous standing in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shooting people. Mm -hmm. um, that they would support him even if he did that. I don't think that there's any way out of that. And I think it will be... In your, <clears throat> in your, in your time with Barbara and, and uh, uh, you know, setting up interviews with people and so on for her, did you ever have to deal with Donald Trump? No. It's amazing, because I would have thought at some point there would have been some interview that you guys did with him at one time there or another. was never a reason he never did anything worthwhile talking about <laughs> yeah okay well i i just want to I, I wondered whether you'd ever met up with him no yeah. i mean i can't think that he ever in his entire life did something that was remarkable and worth mentioning yeah yeah i would agree with you but you know he, uh he sought the lot let me put it this way he sought the limelight so i would have thought one of the limelights he sought would have been your show Oh, yeah. but we'd never put him on. Yeah, okay. there's no reason. Yeah. Everybody who was ever on the show, uh -huh. there was a reason beyond their celebrity or fame. Right. Right. Um, that I mean, a lot of times the only way really big stars will do an interview mm -hmm. is that they have a project to promote. Yeah. So they had a movie coming yeah. up, or if it was a, a musician, a new album or something, and so you go along with that because. Usually, people of the highest celebrity stature will agree to do one at most two interviews to promote something. Yeah. And in those days, the Barbara Walters specials was so important that that was one that they would seek yeah. out. Yeah. People but, don't people don't realize that, but when people have a movie coming out, they actually have it written in their contract how many interviews they will do yes. promoting the movie. Yes. And uh, and sometimes they say, oh, "I'll only do two. And, or well, sometimes, fun. often uh, one. <laughs> well, sometimes they're so big they go, "I'm not going to do any." Uh, but you know, you kind of want to do them because you promote the movie, people go to see the movie, that gives you box office, that gives you a bigger check next time. You know, so uh, you, there's a there's a but they never. It's usually they never come out unless they've got something to promote. But do you remember the days when you were a Cavett years ago? Where somebody would go on the Cavett show and didn't have anything to promote, they just wanted to go on the Cavett show. That was more a discussion show than a Q and A, though. Well, yeah, it, it was it your typical. Slightly different sensibility with the public. But what, um, I, what and, I'm saying, not that people weren't on that show to promote things, but you're right. Sometimes but they weren't. In those days, if they went on Carson, for instance, there were people who went on Carson and had nothing to promote. They just went on Carson. You but know. it kept their name out there. The, the yeah. t very top stars wouldn't do that. But I. But today, they really won't come out unless they've got something to promote. Yes. Yeah. So it's all, that's all kind of change. My yes. how times change. So do you right. have anything to promote? Of course you do. You have timegoesby.net. Well, you can do that so well. I don't the, need to one do One of it. the most fabulous sites on the Internet. How's that? <laughs> I like this part. <laughs> yeah, the... the 
uh, cupping your hand to your ear. So, what was so? Uh, I knew radio announcers. What we used to do, folks, is we would cup our hand to our ear. You know this, because you can hear what you sound like when you do mm -hmm. that. And so, a lot of announcers would ha have the script in one hand and their e hand up to their ear here and be announcing using that as their. But since we have I earphones, have to tell you that's the one thing watching the. Uh, watching Congress last week and the speakers, yeah. who are, especially Schumer, so good at what he does. Yeah. But so, but you know, and they were reading. This had all been written for yeah. them, each yeah. of their speeches, and they would get lost. I mean, you know, given how many hours they were spending in Congress, and you have yeah. to eat and sleep too, they probably didn't have a lot of time to study this. But I just, I so wanted. To go and kind of help them out, you know, and instruct yeah. them, underline this word and slow down when you speak here, yes, then yeah. move this quickly, That's right. and so on. And uh, and it was just it. I I just felt like you know, years and years ago when I used to work for a living, I could have helped them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh wow. But anyway, uh, it, 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 we put our hand to our ear like that, and I I just know that some people still do that, even though they're wearing earphones. They don't need, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But it's an old habit, it's if old you're old habit. enough. Hey, listen, you're looking swell, baby. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, you. yeah and, uh, Except uh, for the little beard. I oh, just never noticed I'm sorry. It it's because I'm now lighting my face, okay? <laughs> I just happen to not like that kind of beard. You never noticed that I had a beard. Well, if I did, it didn't stand out to me. Well, get used to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, still busting my balls after all these years. <laughs> That's Ronnie Bennett. Time goes by.net. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Ronnie Bennett. That's our uh, old ex. Uh, she comes on here about once every two weeks, and we uh, we have a good little conversation. And she, as I say, busts my balls. And that's it. Uh, what? What? My chair is stuck on the on the thing. Okay. All right. Are we okay? All right. We're all right. Oh, uh, is the light on? Yeah, the light's on. Everything's ready to go here. Uh. I got some things to talk about. I lost my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, well, I'll, t I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, let me see here. Let me see. First of all, I want to turn on the Skype. I, you know, I, I would turn it on, except some of you people start calling while I'm doing, you know, the interview. And the audio for the Skype is on the same channel as my audio for uh, the interview. And so, therefore, it then gets very messy. Okay? All right. Okay. Wow, it takes forever for Skype to click in here and get working and so on. And let me see here. Oh, what is this? What the hell is this about? Oh, hold on a second, folks. Um, I want to, uh, let me see here. I want to get rid of Skype. Where do I go here? Uh, close this down uh, because it, it doesn't have my GabNet logo. I don't know what happened to it. Okay. Quit Skype, okay, and then start Skype up again. This happened the other the, earlier on my uh, my other line, and uh, then the second time I sign in, there's the GabNet logo. Okay, so they did some kind of stupid change there at the at uh, uh, Skype, and or what can I say? Okay. Anyway, uh, our, uh, our Skype lines are open. It's uh, GabNet Live is our Skype uh, ID if you want to uh, call us, uh, any of you out there. Um, be happy to talk with you. Uh, and uh, let's see who's going to be the first to, call, uh, to uh, call in tonight. Maybe nobody. Oh, no, here he comes. Here he comes. Um, Phil Meyer is the first guy online. And uh, he's, uh, let me see, are you there, Phil? Hmm. Huh? Are you there, Phil? I don't hear anything. Phil, you should hear something. You're not hearing anything. Oh, boy. He's not hearing anything. I hear him, so I know we're, we're okay. 
Let me see, Phil. Phil, Phil's got a new setup, and uh, apparently it's not working for him. There, we. Oh, I, I don't hear you on the uh, on the Skype. You don't hear me. Yeah. On the Skype. Uh, well, all I have is your Gabnet logo. It's a Skype thing. Okay. Well, let me let me see here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me go up here to my. Uh, uh, there you are. My. Or, or, oh, yeah. oh, you can hear me now. Hey, Hey Jeff, you can hear me now. Yeah, I I can hear Jeff, and uh, the only the only yeah. communications I have with you, Alex, is via the okay. Uh, hold on YouTube a second. One. There is some reason why the microphone isn't working here. Let me try it here now. No, is that no, it? Alex. No, that's not. Uh, it. Yeah, there's Alex. He can hear us. You can you but, hear? But uh, we hear just him? can't hear him. Can you hear? Okay, we just shut. I up think a that he'll probably. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut them up for a second. Let me see here. Let me see here. Audio codec. Huh. Well, that's weird. Oh, boy. What has changed here? Microphone, codec. Uh, um, they would be able to hear me if I did that. Default device. Let me see here. Uh, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. They can't hear me. Oh, boy. What the hell is this about? Hold on a second, folks. Let me cancel this out. Let me open up Skype. Let me open up the audio here. Let me see if I can figure out why it's not uh, doing it. Um, it should be, uh, we should have a USB audio codec, and it should be working, but it's not. Okay. Automatically adjust the phone. Uh, let me see here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me at all? I guess they can. I don't know what this is all about. Hold on. Let me uh, go here. Let me see here. Sound preferences. Just everybody stop it for a second, okay? I can't do this if you keep uh, calling me like this. Um, hmm. Let me see here. What's the problem? What is the problem? Uh, let me uh, check the sound preferences. Okay. Line out. Okay. Let me see here. Let me go to uh, this. Wait a minute. Output. Line out should be audio line out port. No. Is it USB? USB codec. Hello. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? No, we don't know if they can hear me or not. I have no idea what this is all about. USB. USB audio codec is the output. Um, that should be okay. Okay, well, hold on a second. Uh, Phil, uh, can you hear me now? Okay, I've got your logo. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, yes. You can hear me. Only through YouTube. No, no only through YouTube. No, no, no. Then that no. doesn't count. Only through YouTube. Well, I don't know what the problem is. Through YouTube. All right. Oh, fuck it. I'm just going to turn everybody off here. I don't want to have anything to do with this. Oh, boy. Because I, I know that my audio is going through here. And it's, uh, who knows why it's not, uh, why it's not going through. Um, uh, all my audio should be going through okay. Sound preferences, output is USB, okay, audio, codec, okay. Input is, um, oh, I see here. Wait a minute. There's maybe where we're, input level, okay. All right, now let me see here. Let me turn on my Skype. Oh, boy. Let me see here. Let me see if they... Because I know I'm getting audio through, okay? And uh, uh, let me see here. Let me go up to my Skype and let me go to preferences. In a moment, I'm going to give up on this and just... Oh, there we go. It's working now. Okay, it's working now. All right. Okay. I don't know. Something, something got changed. And uh, let me see the output. We have a line out. Okay. okay.
Okay, there we go. Can you hear me now? now? Through Skype. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I heard you, you were going through on YouTube, and that's the only that, way I was That able doesn't to... matter, Phil. Right, well, that the Skype doesn't, wasn't... It doesn't matter what goes on on YouTube, okay? So. Well, that's the only way I could communicate with you. Well, it, it, I'm, you can't communicate with me because that's delayed. I know, but you heard me. No, and... I, did, I heard you, but that's... All, I got it fixed, Phil, okay? No, okay. I don't... Well, then, hey, goodbye, Phil. Thank you. Jesus Christ. You know, I don't want to argue about this. I just want to get on with the show. I had enough trouble trying to fix a goddamn thing. You know? Oh, boy. Mm. You know, this is just this is just a, a pain in the fucking ass. I don't know why that changed. Nothing changed here uh, except that changed. Here comes Jeff Stein. Okay, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, fine. Okay, great. And let's not discuss why you can hear me, you know. I don't give a shit. As long as uh, I, can hear you. I mean, I just Phil just starts in with all this technical bullshit, and I just, it works, and I shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know. I mean, I just, I'm, what I'm fed up with is I didn't do anything to this equipment over the last couple of days. And somehow uh, the audio uh, output changed it. Input uh, or output changed itself. The audio line uh, out uh, change, uh, or input rather changed itself. So could you hear the interview with Ronnie earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that worked okay. You know, I didn't change <clears throat> anything here. Okay. Well, let, me, let me call Phil back so he's not mad at me. All right. Jesus. No, I can't even find Phil's number here, so I can't even call him back. So, um, hmm. Okay. Well, Phil, if you're listening, you're free to call now, you know, uh, but he won't. Uh, so. He will. Huh? Yeah. No, he won't. He, yeah. but, he, but he's he welcome. He's, he's welcome to call if he wants to because he's listening to YouTube. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh, God. I give up on this. I really do. It's just, it's more than I need. You know, I don't need this. You know? And I just got a nice light and everything. But anyway, you know, so. Um, yeah. So tell me, how's. Well, wait a minute. First of all, Phil, call, will you, Phil? <laughs> it, 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 let me see here. I, it, you know, he did call. And I had him. He sh I should have been able. To, I should be able to call him back. Well, let me see here, Phil. Well, Phil Meyer. Okay, here we go. Add. Okay, so it's calling Phil Meyer. We'll see if he picks up. Um, no, I mean I came on here and just everything is just like changed up, and I just don't understand why, and it makes no sense at all. Now, you're not hearing any tapping, are you? Any tapping sound? Yeah, when you're doing that. Yeah, I can hear that. Well, wait a minute. I just want to make When you sure. do it, hmm? when you do it, I can hear that. Yeah, but you can't hear it as a major sound on your ear no. coming through. Can you hear this, Phil? No. Can you hear this? No. Okay, good. I just want to make sure it isn't going through them there. No, Phil, I just don't want to get into a big discussion on why something works and why something doesn't work. Let me put your, your guys' pictures in here. Um, there we go. Hold on. Just trying to be helpful. Well, you know, I mean, I got the problem solved, so that was it, you know? It's, it was it for you. Okay. No, but we got it solved. All right. I don't know why... Things suddenly decide when I'm o over the weekend, when I'm doing nothing, why they suddenly decide to change. I talked to you on Skype on no. Monday. Yeah, but you didn't talk to me on this system. Oh, no, I talked to you. Talked you talked to your... me on uh, my, uh, my Echo. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you talked to me on Echo, so I, I, that wasn't, uh, you know. That wasn't my uh, uh, 
Oh, it wasn't, wasn't Skype? Oh, no. you answered it wasn't Skype this. On. But I did an interview Sunday with Ronnie, and she heard me just fine. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it could well be that in the last couple of days, and I, and I think it's true, uh, Skype upgraded something, so, and maybe, so it, maybe it threw off my inputs up here, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, who knows why that happens. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just that uh, and, and everybody's trying to fuck me over, and my life is just being fucked over completely. Uh, wait a minute, here comes Tony Magno. Okay, let me see here. Let me get Tony a little slot here so we can... We can see Tony Magno. Uh, Magno, Magno, Magno. Where is he? Uh, there, Webhead. There we go. <laughs> Just like um, and boom, there is Tony. Okay. Um, no, I mean, it's just, it just, I don't know. I don't know what happened. So um, hmm. um, um, uh, just to tell you what's been happening, everything in my life, right, okay, has been fucking itself up. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just one massive screw up after another. First thing that happened to me, by the way, I mentioned it to Ronnie on uh, Saturday, I'm at Costco and I'm walking down the aisle and I just tap somebody else's cart and I've got my, I got my earphones in. So I just pull back, negotiate myself around just a tap, not a smash, not a, you know, were you riding the cart, uh, the electric cart? No, 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 no. This, I was pushing the cart. And, and I just tapped the cart. And it's this black guy. He starts yelling at me. Say you're sorry. Oh, my God. Oh my God. And I go, it, well, it, uh, you know, now I, I will say I'm sorry. Uh, I Usually I do. I was, it was just so insignificant that I didn't feel it was yeah. necessary, right? Mm -hmm. And I go up to him. I said, what's your problem? He says, you didn't say you were sorry for tapping into me. Oh, my God. And I went, well, um, you know, I just tapped into you. What's your problem? He says, you're racist. <laughs> Writing costumes? Now, I, 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 listen, I've heard of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> and oh. I've heard of the uh, Nazis. Uh, and in their racism, nowhere did the act of tapping someone else's cart come into play. And not uh, wearing a hat. <laughs> huh? Wearing a hat. Wearing a hat. So, oh I mean, it, 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 yes it, or no? Were you wearing a hat? Yeah. Uh, well, he could have mistaken you for a skinhead. And then he called me an old coot. A skinhead. No, 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 he called me an old coot. Yeah. And uh, which is, of course, ageist. And I said, I'm not the racist. You're the racist. And we start, I started yelling at him. I started tell, really going I mean, after him. And he's yeah, going after me. He's like getting in my face, you know. Now, uh, I, I'm not a racist, okay? But let me say something about black people. <laughs> All right? And I've learned this as I've lived in Harlem. They don't like their space invaded. Okay? And so a minor tap on a shopping cart is a major violation to some black people. You know, in Marin County, they don't like their space uh, invaded either. If you try to make a change your lane in Marin, mm -hmm. people cut you off into oncoming traffic and let you have a head-on collision rather than let you in. Uh, <laughs> they're invading their space. Yeah, but these aren't these aren't. We aren't talking about black people here. These are just white people. Yeah. Oh, definitely white people. A privileged, right. privileged Marin County white people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I don't think it matters black, white, privilege. Well, no, no, no. But th there's something about the uh, intruding on space. I I if you t if you bump into a black guy, you better say you're sorry. You know, uh, if he bumps into you, he never says he's sorry. It it's just on. But uh, you know, in fact, he sometimes imagines you bumped into him. You know. But I mean, I just I went. That really, uh, what, you know, and I finally decided I'm going to become a racist. Are you, are you starting to become a Republican? No, I decided to become a racist. It's All right. the same wanted, thing. Same <laughs> thing, I guess. Uh, and the reason I've decided to become a racist, ladies and gentlemen, to be honest with you, is if I'm going to be accused of being one, I may as well get my money's worth, right? Right. Right. You know, that's kind of, you know, that's very insulting that 
just how they can casually say, I'm not even going to say about the skin color, like just to say something like that to somebody in a supermarket is very, if you say it, then you're racist. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you you what the problem is. Tell you what the problem is, um, is that what bothers me about what he said wasn't so much that he called me a racist because, you know, uh, basically I can say I've lived a fairly decent life that way where I'm not a racist. Uh, But, but, and I'm not going to say I'm not a racist because I'm white, and then if I say I'm not a racist, they go, well, you don't know you're a racist, you know. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll admit to the fact that I'm white. There are certain misconceptions I might have, blah, blah, blah. Let's go on. Let's get rid of that. But the thing that bothered me was how he was diminishing black problems in this country by taking them down to that point where I was a racist because I tapped his cart. It's, it's... You know, uh, he was I, I, I have a feeling to do with race or racism. I think you just tapped into a guy that was a fucking idiot. Yes, <laughs> the maniacs. Is that the one in Long Island City? I don't shop there. I go to me and my brother go to one in Long Island. I refuse to go yeah. to that Costco. I think it is because mm-hmm. I went there once and I think it's a nut house. It's always it's always congested. We drive out to out to Long Island. We went there once. I was like, I'm not coming here again. Yeah. I said, I yeah. just, I just. There was too many people all over the place. I felt like they were on top of me. Like, Actually, they, they were in party like. I've decided I've really got to put you guys on the other side of the here because I'm always looking this way, looking at stuff, and then it doesn't look like I'm looking at you. And I should be looking you at know, you. You know you should have told him, Alex? I'm not a racist. I voted for Obama. <laughs> yeah, right, Al. Well. You know, I, mean, I, 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 I but it, 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 a shitty president. Yeah. But, so that was the beginning of my sh- my shitty week. Okay, now but we're that's go- not now right we're going to get to my really that's shitty part of my week. Worse than that. Okay, but no, wait a minute. It 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 my week got worse. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, so Monday I'm supposed to go in for my first course of radiation. Yeah, and okay. on Friday, uh, a woman from my doctor's office calls me and says, listen, we just need an okay by you uh, to, to obtain your uh, 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 slides from your biopsy. In other okay. words, the actual tissue, okay, tissue slides. And I said, what do you need them for? And she said, oh, we always like to have them here on, on record, okay? And I said, fine. That was all. That was all in the call. I said... Uh, how does this affect what I'm supposed to do Monday? And she said, well, I don't know. You're going to have to talk to them about it. I don't know. You know. So comes Monday, I get in the car, and I have it take me to the um, uh, uh, the place where I'm going to be radiated, which, by the way, I, I hate to say this, it's in the same building as a children's ward. Oh, that's tough. But it's in the basement, and I'm sure it's lead lined, okay? But I just think about you know you got children up on the about two floors, and you got basically the Manhattan Project going down in your on in your basement, you know. So know. anyway, um, I go there and I go. I'm here, Bennett Schwarzman. I'm here for a two o'clock uh, 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 zapping, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, they look at the list and they go, well, let's see, I have you here for four o'clock. And I'm going, four o'clock? And then he goes, well, wait a minute. You, you've been, you, you canceled your appointment. Oh, shit. Yeah. I said, I didn't cancel my appointment. And he said, somebody did. And I said, well, let's find, get to the bottom of this. So they went, she, he went and got this woman, who I guess is a radiologist. And she said, Oh, they uh, they called in the uh, last Friday and canceled the uh, the radiation. I said, "What? Why?" She said, "Well, because they hadn't gotten the pathology slides yet, and oh, they need the shit. pathology slides." And I said, "Wait a minute, this is this is ridiculous." I said, "I did the prep last night. I drank, it had that tea, tablespoon full of." Uh, Milk of magnesia, which in and of itself is worthy of a of a of a gold medal, I said. And then then this morning I had to do the uh, the uh, uh, fleet enema, and then I had to shit my brains out. And now you're saying to me that you aren't going to be doing the radiation today? She says we can't do it. They canceled it, but we'll take you up to your doctor. So they take me up to the first floor, the uh, main floor. 
And there's my doctor's office, which I forgot. It was in that same building. And I meet up with my doctor. And he says to me, oh, well, we canceled it because we can't do it until we have the slides evaluated by our own pathologist. Now, I'm thinking to myself, I said to him, I said, if you've known about this for two weeks, maybe three. You went and you did the the uh, the thing where you uh, you know you went in and put in the gold posts and the thing, and then we did the simulation of the radiation thing and everything like that. And you didn't think to send away for the pathology. He said, "Oh, I asked my nurse to. I guess she forgot." Oh. What? She also forgot to call me and cancel the fucking appointment. Th that's exactly it. Yeah, and and I'm thinking to myself now, this, what's going through my head is I've got cancer, and now I'm relying on these, this gang that can't shoot straight. You know, and uh, they worked on Giuliani. Yeah, well, um, who, <laughs> you know, who knows? Uh, you know, but anyway. so who is? Did you meet the actual? Hmm. What did I meet? What did you meet the actual lady? Who screwed up? No, I've never seen her yet. <laughs> you'll never know because they'll all just kind of look at you funny, and you'll you'll have to guess which one well, it is. I mean, I it, uh, again, you know, I mean, they they it, uh, to begin with, they should have never done that, putting in the gold posts and the and the spacer, and putting me under to do that before they had the pathology. He, his explanation to me was a few years back, there was some guy who they had, uh, did a, 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 what do you call it, a thing on, and he had a Gleason 8. And so they radiated him only to find out that he only had a Gleason 6, which wouldn't have demanded this, okay? Uh, and I can appreciate that. I can appreciate it because all medicine now is defensive medicine. It isn't proactive medicine. But, uh, you know, at least you do this first, then you do the posts in the prostate, then you do the simulation, and then you <coughs> tell me to show up for radiation, and they're ready there to zap me with their ray gun, you know? Instead... Look what happens. So how am I supposed to feel about this? You know? Uh, Spills trust. Huh? What? It instills a lot it, of it trust. It instills a lot of fucking trust. And now, you know, I'm in a position, I've got can prostate cancer. I need this thing taken care of. I said to him, is holding it off for a couple of days going to cause problems of it getting worse? And he said, no. Nah. He said, it's very slow growing. You know, this, this stuff's slow growing even when it's aggressive. Um so uh, uh, I said, okay, I was just, I was very nice, but he was very apologetic and I was very nice about it. But I walked away with the feeling about, you know, I really would love to get, go find myself another doctor, you know, but I'm in the middle of this game now and he's got his life in my hands and I can't exactly dump him because if I go say over to Sloan Kettering, I start from square one i mean they have all the material on me and all the war pre-work's been done on me mm -hmm. but uh you know i mean um i don't know I, I, and that so put me off you know and it still got me and today no. he said i'll call you tomorrow and let you know what's happening because we should get the slides tomorrow and i'll see if i can speed up up the uh the uh, the guy doing the uh, our guy looking at them and i didn't hear anything from him today and I'm gonna wait till about I'm gonna wait till about oh, three o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. And if I haven't heard from him, I'm calling up and yelling and screaming, you know. Yeah, um, what it'll do is cause you to start asking a lot more questions ahead of time. Well, I mean, I assume that they made the appointment with me. They told me when I was supposed to show up, you know, and all of well, that. Well, you find out you find out with all these screw ups, and I did, you know, with a lot of things that I went through is. All of a sudden, you start learning to play the oh, game, let me, is what they say. By the way, let me change my panel here, because you can see that that's Kevin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought I put Kevin up. Hold on a second. Let me, let me put Kevin in. Everything's going screwy tonight. Uh, let me see here. 
Yes, hog rider. Okay. Now you'll see Kevin come up. There he goes. Boom. There's Kevin. Um, but you start learning to play the game and you find yourself, you know, you're, you're doing most of the work because, you know, you're bugging the hell out of them, but yeah, you know, that's the way it is. You gotta, you gotta start, you know, start maintaining all that crap yourself and asking all the questions. You keep asking the same questions, but that's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But anyway, so. But earlier, all you guys, by the way, it's strange. All you guys heard, huh, okay, I don't understand it. You all heard Ronnie in the yeah. interview earlier. Okay, well, and you heard me, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Oh, minute. I heard her on YouTube, not on Skype. You were, and and yeah. you were coming through fine on YouTube. It was the Skype that we were having the problem. <clears throat> you were having problems getting it from Skype, yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, so anyway, so, I mean, that really, that really, it depressed me. It still has, is depressing me because they didn't call me today, you know? So then on top of that, next step is today I had to go to my dentist because I had this tooth and the tooth had an old metal filling that had fractured and was uh, loose. So they had, and she said, it's awfully close to a nerve. We may have to do a root canal. This was the other day. So today she explained the same thing to me before she started. And then she went in and she managed to do it without doing a root canal, which is fine. But she says, you know, the crown next to it is falling apart. And so we better replace that because... What it's going to do is it may cause more decay to be created on the other tooth again. So I go, okay, how much is that going to be? They say about 500 bucks out of my pocket. Okay. Out of their pocket, out of, uh, you know. So I go, all right, you know, let's do it. Right? She says, and by the way, the crown that's falling apart on the bottom back uh, has, uh, has, um, um, uh, right has decay oh. under the crown, which is falling apart. Uh, and uh, she said, we may go in there and find that it's a root canal tooth, that it's it's just completely decayed and we can't do anything about it. In which case, it, they'll pull the goddamn thing, which I don't mind. It's all the way in the back. You know, what do I need that tooth for anyway, right? But now, when I first went to this dentist, about a year ago, it was because I had this tooth pulled and I wanted to get an implant. And they said, well, we can't do an implant until we fix your mouth and all these other problems you got in it. And it's been one after another. And now with this, this is putting me over the amount that, they, that I would, that the, the, uh, the uh, 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 insurance sure. will pay. And it's like $500 for this crown, $500 for the other crown, how much for the cleaning that I had? How much for the tooth that just got fixed? And then how much money do I have left over? I need $1,600 for them to take care of half. So I, I guess I'm just going to forget about even trying to do this, this uh, implant. But that got to me. And then on the way home, somehow, I lost my senior MTA Metro Pass. Oh, I, I, I used it. But I, and I put it back. I thought I put it back in my wallet, but when I came home, it wasn't in the wallet. So I had to apply now for have to have them replace it, which will be That's, which will be three weeks. So I'll be paying full fare for three weeks. Now you see why George Washington had wooden teeth. He was up to the top level of his insurance, and uh, he elected the wood rather than an implant. But nothing's going right. Nothing's going right. It's just, uh, just an absolute clusterfuck. Okay, so that's those are my problems, folks. Yeah, you should go to a veterinarian surgeon. <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. You know, they charge a lot less. And plus, yeah. when I'm through it, you give me a chew toy. You know. I take they give you a cookie. No, yeah, I mean, just, I just, you know, I I said to. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking to Bubbles today. 
And I said to Bubbles, is, is it just because I'm old that I'm griping about this stuff? I mean, would I have let this roll off my back 40 years ago? And I don't, yeah. th- I don't think so. I think I'd still no. be pissed. You didn't I have. Think I've these- listened to you for a while. You've always been going. You've always spoke like that. No, but I mean, I could have, I could have, I could have had bad problems and then not had a doctor call me back. You know, uh, I mean, it, it, it's pretty, pretty shitty. You know, and then I get all these things from Mount Sinai saying, "Would you like to donate to Mount Sinai?" Fuck you. <laughs> you know. Oh, tell them to build the insurance company. I don't know. That hospital yeah. is turning into a piece of shit. It really is. Really? Oh, I mean, it it's, looks like it's a bit. It's looking like a piece of shit now. Oh, it's an old inside. Yeah. yeah. Try Kaiser. It tri- is Kaiser it's really? Kaiser. Well, are they, still, are they still up there on the, in the Mason District or whatever? Mas- uh, Masonic up District? Above Gary? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I had my second angioplasty that there. Bi- they that building lab. has been there since I was 10 years old, mm-hmm. okay? That's how old that building is. Oh, yeah. Uh, used to be a Sears near there, too. Y- you're right, right down yeah. the street. What's that? Yeah. What's there now? I don't know. It's probably a part of Kaiser. <laughs> it's probably a part of Kaiser, yeah. But, I mean, I just, you know, come on. Give me a break. You know, this is really disgusting. So I wish it could only get better. Oh, don't! I don't. I don't believe. I don't believe that. You know, the only good news I got in all of this was is that that this tooth didn't need to have a root canal. Oh, that's good. But the bad news I got was we better take care of that uh, thing next door to it because uh, uh, otherwise it will. uh, If we put a nice uh, new uh, tooth in there, uh, you'll be uh, you'll be good as new, and it won't hurt the tooth next to it. I'm going. I thought you had the post already put in for your uh, implant. No. Oh, they haven't started the implant. No, I keep w- waiting to start the implant, but every time I do, they find another thing. It's your d- dentist, I hate the fucking dentist. I hate it because it's a money pit. That's all it is. Well, it yeah. is kind of a money pit. Yeah. But Every I mean, time I, go in, I just well, want to leave. I know I need, I need this crown changed. It's falling apart. It's chipped and it's falling apart, right? Can they put temporary on. Oh, and oh, uh, oh, they'll put a temporary on it. Do you know what's funny? I actually had a new uh, crown put in. I think it was here somewhere. And when she went to do it when she the reason she did it was she looked at the tooth and i said you know i'm having a little problems with this tooth or whatever and she looked at it and she says you know that's a crown that's a temporary crown don't you i said what he says yeah somewhere along the line somebody did like i don't know a root canal on the tooth or put a crown on the tooth and it was a temporary crown i said and they never said should we put on the permanent one Oh, wow, and it stayed in all that time. It, it, it was like 10 years old. You should have told her now it's permanent. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, not bad. Why am I having it replaced? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't can, can have a, a temporary crown in there. What? Why not? Why not? I've been doing something. Why not? Hey, if, 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 if chiclets will work, you know. Just don't eat anything hard. I don't eat any hard pretzels no more or nothing. Yeah, I mean, if chiclets will work, I mean, let's just do that. But well, if if it's time that you're trying to deal with, uh, do the implant. Get a have her clean up uh, the decay under the crown that's breaking up. Put a temporary crown on there, and then next year, when your uh, renewal comes around, well, uh, uh, no, I mean it, half the work is her doing all that, and then the crown. You know what? You know what's really interesting about crown. I've told you this about crowns before. I had a girlfriend who. Uh, to put herself through college, was working for an outfit that made crowns and that she would deliver them to the doctors. That was her job. A lap. Yeah. And she said one day, she said to me, you do know how much these crowns cost, don't you? Uh And I said, how much? She says, half the price the doctor's charging you for them. So when the doctor would charge you like $1,200 for a crown, it only cost him $600. So really, my question is, 
Yes, I realize that he should be paid for the installation of the craft. Yeah. Okay, which is the skill, but not for the full cost of the crown. Are you going to get your crown changed in Central Park, or are you going to go to his office where he has staff, insurance, overhead? Yeah, listen, ins my, my dentist, my dentist, nope. my dentist, in all deference to her, okay, yeah. happens to be very good. She's very competent. I mean, she. She oh, I took the old filling out of this tooth today, and then she spent the rest of 45 minutes putting the new filling in and grinding it down and getting it the right shape and all of that, you know, because they don't do they don't do uh, uh, metal anymore, or amalgam or whatever they called that in the old days. The, uh, uh, they just don't do that anymore. Uh, you and you know how you know how they have such good business. I don't mean it as a joke. They'll never say, if you come in this month to do this type of work, we'll give you a discount. They know they have the business. Well, I get a discount. And well, I get a discount. Like, you know, I, well, I, you I, I get a discount because of my insurance, who dictates to them, because they're in network, what they can charge for a particular thing. So actually, the getting, getting this tooth, uh, this crown replaced is going to cost $1,000. I'm going to pay 500 and a normal dentist, if I went to my old dentist that I went oh. to before, this crown would cost me $1,700. That, yeah. That, that, that's what it cost me to do. Yeah. I paid him in two payments. I, was, I mean, I had to give it to him, but I was like, this son of a bitch, I was wondering how much, how much is he making off this? Here, here's my other question, okay? And, and yeah. I've never gotten a, a decent answer from a dentist on this. Maybe you can answer it, Kevin. Maybe you know the answer to these things because you're up on this stuff. Okay, I have a crown that's falling apart. What is the center part of that crown? It's actually probably a gold thing or, or some kind of metal that they then put the porcelain on, right? They fuse the porcelain to it. So why can't we just send this in and have a new porcelain put on it? Why do we have to get a whole new gold tooth with porcelain surrounding it? And by the way, if it's gold, why not let it show? Yes, Jeff. The sort of the structure requires a certain amount of flexibility, mm -hmm. particularly when you bite something that's thick or hard or whatever, or you decide you're going to crunch on some ice or whatever. Yeah. So... To take the, the basic crown is brittle, but it's, it doesn't allow a, a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the gold part is flexible. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's the, yeah, but that's I mean, the reason I, that it's a two-piece design. Yeah. Also, here's the other question I have. This is a crown. Okay, it is put up on top of a dentist will get it ready by putting a post in there if you have a root canal or even if you don't, or it will they will do some kind of preparation if it's just a crown that's going over an existing tooth to get it ready. Why shouldn't I be able to shop around for the crown? Why do I have to use my dentist to charge me whatever he's going to charge me up and over and above what he pays for the crown? Get what I'm saying? In other words, why why can't there be places that are called well? I mean, but it it, it wouldn't this be considered like uh, um, um, uh, what do you call it? The government uh, when they always sue people for it. Uh, See, people point fingers. If mm -hmm. you're the guy that provides the crown and the installation, then you can't point the finger. To the other guy that, that made has the nothing crown. to do with it. They want to want to make it all. Now, well, if, I understand. If, that. if all of a sudden we, what? if we filed an antitrust suit against a dentist, and said, "Look, you're trying to install the crown when really the crown is made somewhere else. Why can't this client go and buy the crown, and then maybe bring it to you and have you install it, or go to the crown place and they can install it there?" Well, 
Didn't you bite down? Maybe go to Costco and get a crown and uh, bring it to them. Yeah, you should. Get two of them. Yeah. Crowns crowns aren't generic. They have to make them to fit the bite. And that's uh, correct. But why can't I go to why can't I go to Crowns or Us? Okay, and have them fit it for me, and I go back and get it, and it's cheaper than if I have my dentist do it. Well, yeah. see, yeah, and, and with my you, dentist John, come on, he has his own guy right there that does them. You're a Republican, Phil. You should you should love this because this is if we open this up like this, and people are going to be competing against each other for the cheapest crowns. Well, free well, enterprise. It's, it's free enterprise. What you're what you're negating in free enterprise is there's no free enterprise in having you have to buy the crown from your dentist. It's no different than glasses. Yeah. Because I go, I go get my eye exam done at my, my real doctor, and then I say, give me the prescription. I'll go down to Costco and grab me some glasses, or I'll go to Glasses R.S. and yeah, get but, my glasses. Yeah, but your doctor, by the way, your doctor who checked your eyes out, gave you a prescription, doesn't say, now I have to send out and get you the glasses, and you have to buy them from him. You don't have to. You can go to Costco or you can go to an opti optical house and have them make your glasses. In fact, in most cases, you do. But it, they don't say, hey, uh, you need glasses. Here's a prescription. Now I'll, I'll, I'll get uh, the, you have to buy the glasses from me. Well, they're doing the same thing with the crown. You have to buy the crown from me. Yeah, because where I go, they walk you right into the room and say, okay, here's the showroom, and they sit you down and they start showing you frames and stuff. And I go, oh, that's nice, that's nice. I'll see you later. Give me my prescription, and I walk out the door. Yeah. You ever saw this company because Kirby Parker? Uh, <clears throat> it's a new thing that they're, they're making glasses, and they're very inexpensive, and they'll send you like five pair at a time. Have uh, you ever gone to that website? Uh, no, but they opened up yeah. a order place around the corner from me yeah i, yeah, I, I, and, I went to that they start <laughs> off real cheap and then by the time you add the screws and the and the little this and the little that they're very expensive really uh, uh, some yeah. people, uh told yeah. me they had a good experience oh well, uh, they might have because they might have picked the cheapest ones or whatever they do have a, inexpensive ones but I, I went to there and and i tried to buy some glasses and i, I was going geez you know i thought these guys are supposed to be cheap and by the time I was done, I was up in the two hundred dollar range. That is cheap. Most most well, of the six to me, no. <laughs> I want those Stanton fifty nine dollar ones. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. well no. you know, I mean, I I just think that, uh, I mean, with glasses is a good example. You can go buy your glasses anywhere. I have a I have an eye doctor, and he'll give me a prescription, and I he doesn't sell them to me there. Okay. He could. Uh, he could, but he doesn't. You know, well, right. this could tell you you need a crown, charge you for an inspection, and then send you to uh, to an. Office. No, they Somebody... she can do all the all the prep work on it, you know, and put it on the temporary crown, and then I go down to Crowns or Us, and they pull that one and put on the new one they've just made for me. Yeah. Well, uh, next time you want to be a dentist, uh, <laughs> school for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, uh, Jeff. Does uh, Costco have a doctor? Who will uh, inspect your eyes? Yeah, a real doctor. Do they? Yeah, they, they have an uh, optometrist department. Right, they do. I, yeah. Okay, so you can actually have your eyes checked there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think about doing that next time. Well, my glasses for me, all I have to do is find the ones that you know. I, they're magnifiers. See, the yeah. thing is, uh, Jeff, is that some of those places will just give you a general eye exam. And, you know, for me, they're looking at the back of my eyeballs. I got other issues with eye, you know, eyes. And yeah. They don't do mm -hmm. all those puff tests and all those other things. And, uh, you know, if, you're, if you've got general eye stuff, you know, go in and get your eyes checked to see if you got 20 or 40 or whatever yeah. and get your glasses there. That's great. But um, yeah. you if see, you got other stuff, you got to get checked. Probably no, my isn't wife a good place. I mean, I you know, I would one thing I appreciate about my dentist is that she does care that every inch of my mouth is okay. But I thought that when she got finished with me in November that everything in my mouth was okay, that she had checked everything out and it seemed to be okay. But all of a sudden she's finding 
you know, yeah, I know this tooth is falling <clears throat> apart in the back. I haven't cared about it, you know, because it's in the back. You know, I don't even bite down on it that much. But I do need this one here, and I can't afford to get that done because, you know, so. Next year at this time, while, when I'm still waiting for my radiation, uh, I will, uh, you know, oh, boy, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm just amazed, you know. Um. I got something <laughs> up. Hmm? I got something in the mail. What? Uh, Lee Presson's album. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Did he send it to you? No, no. I uh, bought it off his uh, his site. Yeah. Okay. Good. He didn't sign it for you, though. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I don't. How much did he charge for it? Uh, with the uh, freight and tax, it was sixteen dollars and change. Oh, that's not bad. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's even got cellophane over it. I, you know. Did you tell him Alex sent you? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, I, we talked to him the other yeah. night, and I, you know, I said, well, gee, I wanted the CD version. And then it popped up on my Facebook feed, and I bought it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, you know, there are some spaces, if you notice right there, it looks like the back of my mouth does right now. Uh, and uh, we could use some more callers here. What happened to Kath? I haven't heard from Kathleen since for about two weeks now. Yeah, Does she have some stuff going on, huh? Does she have some stuff going on? No. Some uh, family stuff? Uh, not that I know of, but you know. Oh, she communicates with uh, uh, with Tony. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard about them. She usually chat back and forth. She tells me about your fun stories, Alex. But not really. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Well, you know, I just like to have her here. So if you're listening, Kathleen, at one point or another, give us a call. I wonder if it would Renee. Remember we got the call from Hawaii you got the other day? I wonder who that was. That was, uh, that was um, um, uh, what's his name? Lee. Uh, 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 Lee. Uh, oh, what's the, okay. Yeah. He wound up calling Jack. Okay. And then Jack told him that I wasn't taking calls because I wasn't able to answer them. I don't know where Jack got that fucking idea. <laughs> if, if you look, Jack, right now, if you listen to this program, you see I have no trouble getting anybody online. Except yeah. in the beginning. <laughs> well, tonight, I don't, you see, I didn't touch anything on this computer. I never went to that, okay? I never changed it. It happened because you're a racist. Skype is affected by your. You got to go to the other one. I think I think Skype sometimes can affect things like that. Here's the other thing. I'll tell you uh, another thing, folks. And I, you know, here's the old fart going to work again. By the way, how does my light look? Do I look all lit up now? Yeah, no shadows. Huh? No shadows. No, it's be it's, It looks better than. Uh, than it looks. Your, uh, it, it looks. Your, be it looks better than this. Yeah. 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 yeah so, anyway. And I was thinking of getting another one for over here, but I don't know if I want to overlight it. Anyway. Uh, turn it down so you can make it more even yeah, and then yeah. turn it. Um, so it, part of the thing that griped me about this, uh, this, uh, this whole thing with the hospital is on top of that, I had to go uh, on a, uh, a diet, which is basically I had to go on a full low-carb diet because they don't want any gas in you when you do this radiation. I don't know. Maybe the radiation plus the uh, gas will make you explode. I have no idea. But anyway. Maybe I just don't like the smell. So I so on Sunday, we had a party out in New Jersey that we had to go to. And it was a uh, it was our friends who are Chinese. Uh, oh. And uh, they uh, they were holding their uh, what Chinese What kind of food did they have, Tony? They don't make the regular chinks. They never eat their... That's American Chinese food. Uh, Sorry, know. Alex. Go I'm ahead. Concerned <laughs> about getting the coral, uh, what is the coral virus or? Yeah, did you hear? Well, let, let him tell the story first. That's serious shit, I think. Anyway, we went out to our <laughs> Chinese friends, uh, who um, 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 they had the, they had the Chinese New Year party, and they had like all the families of the people they knew who were Asian, who uh, came to this party and brought their kids. And it was wonderful. I said, the wonderful thing about Chinese New Year is it's a family 
New Year, where New Year for us is like go get drunk with adults, you know? <laughs> it's true. And it was Leave wonderful to see home, all these yeah. kids, and they actually had a dragon dance there. They had a, oh, really? they, in fact, if you go to my Facebook page, uh, it's there. Yep. I put it up. And um, they were, uh, uh, it, was, it was wonderful. But they had all this great food. And I had to be careful what I ate so I wouldn't be farting the next day. Any spare? Did they have a bowl of spare? I love that. Oh. No, no. Well, they, uh, they made some you, stuff. You, he, he uh, this guy who was holding the party, who we know, um, and um, he um, made a, a, a beef thing that was Ooh. just to die for. Just yeah, to I die love Chinese food. When but, I was in San Francisco, my brother took me to Chinese food. We had it every night when we were near yeah, Chinatown. But, I loved it. But, but, but the point was that, that I couldn't eat a lot of it. And had I not had this thing the next day, you could have picked I would have everything. picked out on this shit, right? And had a good time. Instead, I'm like, they're going, they're going to me like, why aren't you eating that or this? And I'm going, because I'm on this diet, because I got to have this radiation thing tomorrow, and I, you know, I can't do it. And so they even fucked me up on that, you know? Gosh, so gosh. now I'm figuring, fuck you. Fuck you. I'm just going to eat anything I want. Hey, tomorrow's radiation. Right. Great. I'm going to eat whatever I want. And if I fart, smell it, pal. That's right. Payback's a bitch. Next yeah. time they're going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what What do you mean your your radiation can't get through gas? If it just can't say, get through gas, it's oh, not going to get through I, my prostate. Just, what? Just say, oh, I forgot. Sorry. Yeah, nobody, I, nobody I, called me. Nobody I, called me and told me. <laughs> Possibly the uh, the uh, movement during uh, the fart uh, could cause the cyber knife to uh, not you know you know how they have to keep you still. Uh, Phil, how he's sounding so scientific right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Phil, we always go to Phil because he knows everything about medicine. When they cut yeah. you, when they do it, yeah, he's a doctor now. I so. know about voodoo. Yeah, 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 but no, I bet, uh, but um, um, uh, the, he is right about, about, the left. Really? about keeping you still, I but the, like, I have a cast that was made that I lie, I'm going to lie in, where I won't, <clears> it, it'll keep me still, completely still. But, does it come with a death mask? But the cyber knife process also works on a method of being able to adjust for the movement of the prostate because it wobbles or something, you know. But uh, supposedly it's very accurate, you know. Supposedly it's very, there's very a, good. There's a device called the sphincter stabilizer that they yeah, use. Yeah, they, but they also, I hear they also have a cyber knife. They actually have the actual cyber knife over at Sloan Kettering. I guess I could go over there. Oh, my mom goes there. They have, it's nice in there. It's all up. up. You can see it's nice. Does your mother have cancer? Well, she's re she's in re you know she doesn't have. They took a she did the operation in for the colon cancer. They oh, took oh it out. okay. So that's why she was a slow. So cancer. yeah, when we yeah. go there, she just we just went for her CT scan. She it, was because they wouldn't see me ex Sloan Kettering when I just wanted a second opinion until oh. I had some proof that I oh. had prostate cancer. You're they right about see. that, Alex. You can yeah. only go there if you have. Yeah. Now my cousin's a fireman. He's I feel I'm in. part of a club right. now. Hey guys. Yeah. I got it. Can I come in now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah there we go. Up a bit, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Show pages. You know, yeah. Alex, you want to laugh? But you mentioned the Chinese, and this is a true story. My uncle Tommy, my father's older brother, he was he had a good he had a very good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. He would drop all these, like he would like. He would call, you know, he's Italian, but he would call me Guinea. So we went to Jersey one time. My cousin Chris, they live in a nice area, in Cresco. Uh -huh. And my cousin Chris had two Chinese friends over for the birthday party. Maybe the kid was 10. So my Uncle Tony, my godfather, right, mm -hmm. he was there. And Tommy always would just talk. He he was into everything. He was just a funny guy. So he'd say, hey, chopsticks, go get me a call. Go get me a soda. <laughs> my Uncle Tony's like, what are you, stupid? So I'm just joking with him. He's got a name, but he had like one of the Lord. He's calling the kid. He's, I'm only joking. Yeah, but the kid's going to go home. I got to tell him he called me yeah. chopsticks. Oh, Come on. Oh, by the way, all of this happened just a few days after the trial. Yeah. You know, and the way that ended, you know, which is like. You had a crazy couple of weeks. Oh, it, it, it I'm, 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 our, our trial's a cliffhanger. <laughs> you know, stay tuned for the next episode of, you know. 
So hopefully it gets settled then, right? Yeah, yeah. It says, oh my God, this is Tom Lou. Oh God, Phil's starting in with his annoying jokes. I'm out of here. Hmm. Paul Welcome. Jung. I like Phil's jokes, says Paul Jung. <laughs> uh, and Ms. Tack says, you've got a doggy bag on the food. What? I don't know. I, can't, I don't see You should have got a doggy bag on your food. Oh, you like should have got a doggy beers. bag on your food, yeah. But anyway, so, the, you know, I mean, I just, uh, that, uh, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm just annoyed with life. I'm annoyed. What I get most annoyed by is when I did my job. Okay, when I had one. Do you all remember that when I had one? Raise your hand. Um, had one. <laughs> when I did my job, I yeah. did it every day that I went into the best of my ability. I did my craft, you know, and I honed it, and I didn't, I didn't go in half-baked. I took it seriously, and, uh, you know, and I was tried to be as accurate as, as possible about things. So it bothers me when I find inefficiency. You know, if you they took... They should have called you, at if, least. Yeah. Well, first of all, you're the doctor. These are your nurses. You got to keep on them. You know, you're responsible. Because in the end, I mean, he's responsible for what happened. He's the one who had to apologize. Now, I just wonder if he went back to his nurses and said, never do that again. But I doubt it. <laughs> you know. Doubt it. They might have fired him. Or, or if they, I wonder if they could fire them. Yeah. Oh, it would be nice if they checked my slides and said, oh, this guy doesn't need radiation. You know, that be, that yeah. won't happen. That won't happen. They'll probably say, oh, he's a Gleason 9. You know, so. Enough of the Gleasons. Get, let's get this over with already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You missed out on By the way, when I talk about a Gleason score, I'm not talking about the ratings on the Honeymooners, okay? So I just uh, you know, wanted to. But anyway, um Gee, we haven't uh, talked. Uh, I guess people. Oh, yeah, our numbers are going down, so we better talk about the uh, impeachment. I guess. Did you see that uh, hypocrite? What was his name? The guy who did Clinton. Um, Star. Kenneth Star. What a hypocrite he is. Oh yeah. What happened? Then? Oh, what a hypocrite he is. I mean, he's going. You know, I. This is. You know, this is terrible. What they're doing. Blah 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 blah. And yet he was so gung ho for impeachments when it was Clinton. Oh, you yeah. know, Starr said that uh, if he had it to do all over again, he, uh, he wouldn't have sought impeachment. Oh, well, because thank you very much, you motherfucker. You cost us like $50 million, you piece of shit. And the Mueller report didn't? Uh, huh? And and the Mueller report wasn't expensive, too? It was, what, $35 million? Well, it wasn't what it cost us for that impeachment. And it isn't what's costing for this impeachment now. This impeachment's got to be... I mean, times have changed, so there's more money involved. And uh, But, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, I... I, I, I but I haven't been able to watch any of it because I've been too busy getting my teeth drilled and having a trial and uh, trying to fight to get my prostate radiated, you know. So I only watch a little bit of this, and uh, um, uh, I'm surprised America isn't bored by it already, you know. But I find I was in a cab yesterday, or in a car, I took a, a lift, and uh, uh, I've taken taking cars now because they're more convenient and they don't cost that much more um, than a cab. But uh, I in the ca cab in the car he was listening to the you know the the, uh, the hearings, uh, so I you know I, uh, I I imagine America is kind of riveted to this, um, and uh, well they said the poll today was seventy five percent the the public wants witnesses now and it looks like we're probably going to get them because it looks like about. They say upwards to 10 Republican senators are going to defect from uh, just uh, doing away with that. They want, they want the, yeah. the, the people uh, to testify as well. Uh, and I think that part of that is, is they realize they have to go back to their constituents and say, hey, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them saying, let's listen to this evidence. Nobody's going to not vote for them because they wanted to listen to the evidence. All right. That there's right. much more of a chance that people won't vote for them if they vote against the evidence. Yes, Jeff. There's one guy who's going to be totally pissed off. Who? That's the president. Yeah, of course. 
of course. But it, it looks like it isn't, it isn't going to be just up to Susan Collins and Mitt Romney and so on. Mitt Romney had a very good statement that he made. He said he wants to have witnesses, but he also wants the president, if he wants to, to have witnesses as well. That, that, that to get, make an even playing field, and and I think everybody would agree with that. If the president wants to present his witnesses, go right ahead. I don't think he will because he didn't present any witnesses or anybody for the congressional hearings, and now everybody's going around saying, "Oh well, you know, they had the congressional hearings, and everybody heard everything they had to hear in the congressional hearings." And the fact is, no, they didn't because he didn't allow a lot of his people to talk in front of the congressional hearings. And the president had every ability to send his people over to make his case, and he didn't. Okay. That, oh, that's not true. But, but it he is true. It, it, no, he didn't. He didn't send anybody over. He had the ability uh, in those hearings to send his people over to make the case for him. He did not. Uh, well, he had other reasons, he said. That uh, he felt it was a sham. Well, no, that it, that, that doesn't matter. Then don't sit around and gripe. <laughs> that's that, like a, that, well, that, a that's a dog ate my that's homework. Ex- that's a dog ate my homework excuse. You know, uh, the fact is that he, he don't don't not send people over because it's a sham, and then say nobody invited me to send people over. That's bullshit. And block seventy one subpoenas. Yes. What is the president hiding if he doesn't want people to testify? Yeah. You know, I'll uh, hate the subpoena. I understand that every time now that there's going to be uh, a uh, Congress that's in power, that's an opposite party to the president, this is going to be used as a, uh, a, a as a way of getting back at the uh, person mm-hmm. that's in power. So, well, what's, well, let's face it. To begin with, that person in power has to do something wrong. I, but he didn't. Well, no, no, no. In your opinion, he didn't do something wrong. In the opinion of a lot of people, yes, he did. It's a question of you believe the president, and we believe that he. We believe the president as well, based on everything he said. That what went on. Now, why wouldn't he want Bolton? To and testify? I think it takes a lot more than opinion to to do that. They've they've done a little bit more than just opinion. They've proven. Mm-hmm. Look. Uh, the thing about uh, Some having the things your that have made close, them prove having your close advisors be subject to this kind of scrutiny doesn't allow for the uh, free flow of uh, discussion uh, at at that level. And I think that uh, executive privilege in that situation is warranted. But when you are using executive privilege to hide a misdoing, then you're, that executive privilege doesn't hold. I don't think the misdoing was uh, reaches the level of impeachment. Well, that maybe you believe that. We happen to think it does. Yeah, because you guys have been looking no, for an impeachment no. since the day he was no, elected. No, Phil, Phil, this is a guy who was holding up aid uh, to get some kind of political favor from another country. He said, can you help us? He was investigating. Uh, he the said, two- can you do... Uh, can you uh, can you do? Was it us? He said. I, yes. I don't, yes. Yes. Can you, you do us a favor? Well, me. that could be the personal us, or it could be a cumulative us. Well, I uh, he wanted. Well, to then know. I think then I think he should come forward and explain it. They have. He's no, he hasn't. He hasn't. Told. He hasn't explained hey, it at all. He doesn't have. Well, to he, he he should come forward. He's being accused. That that's. That's the thing that I'm I'm still in the middle on. I mean, bring it bring it out because see, I'm still in the middle on the whole thing. I'd like to see him come out and and you know, show it. Yeah, show it. I mean, in the whole in the whole Clinton thing, Clinton at least uh, was deposed. You know, Ship has for the last. You didn't two answer minutes, that question, has, Phil. Uh, let me finish. Ship has been saying that he's got re- irrefutable evidence that uh, Trump. Uh, for the last two and a half years, was colluding with the Russians, was doing all these other things. He doesn't have shit. I think they ought to depose uh, Ship because he's a fact witness and he should he should tell what he knew. He had irrefutable evidence. He said, 
Uh, and that was for the last two and well, a half years. Well, they may actually ask him to bring it forward if it's allowed to be brought forward into this situation. I'm sure well, he wouldn't have said it unless he had it. If they're going to have witnesses, I want to see Ship. Uh, Here's a question. Uh, his name isn't Ship. It's Schiff. It's Schiff. How long did he take away to give them the aid? Does anybody, I mean, I don't know. Was it a few days? Did they get the, they did get the aid though, right? Yeah. Well, after but the shit did, hit the fan, yeah. Wait? After the shit hit the fan. Yeah, but he never said to uh, uh, Zelensky that um, that he was holding up anything. Uh, all he did was ask him to look into this corruption. Uh, but he was holding up a. You know, he says he was holding up Bill, aid. Why? Why would he care about any kind of corruption that went on in another country? Oh, why? Of course. Well, because we're giving them four hundred million dollars. Why, Phil? Why because it happened, and why? Why? Well, I'm sure there's a lot of other corruption in in uh, in the Ukraine. In fact, there that we know that to be a fact, and it had nothing to do with Hunter Biden. Why did he want the goods on Hunter Biden? He wanted to know about Hunter Biden. Why and corruption? Why? Well, because it was uh, it stunk. It, no, it, wait a minute, it, it stunk. Wait a minute, it stunk. But why did he need to know that information if it wasn't for his own benefit? Uh, because uh, well, it, blah, 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 blah. The, the money was bipartisanly approved already. To go. Yeah, he has a duty. He has a, a fiduciary duty to make sure that he's not giving. No, the money. he has a duty then once the Congress he has to do it the right way. He goes back to Congress and stops it and talks about it, but he doesn't stop and do it himself because he was ordered by Congress to disp uh, or given the okay to dispense those those um, funds. And in those cases, the president can't block those funds unless he goes back to Congress and asks for them to be blocked. That's when it, that's when you try to play king, and you can't play king in our country. Well, I uh, I'm I'm happy that he was he was looking to to stop that money if they were corrupt. That's fine, was, but turn around and go back and do it the right if way. If you said if you said I hear there is corruption in your country, and I would like you to make some statements about it, that would be one thing. He just wanted to know about the corruption as it was regarded. Uh, Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, who he considered his main political adversary in the upcoming election. He shouldn't have even mentioned Biden in his statement in his phone call. He shouldn't even have brought it up. Yeah. He shouldn't have mentioned that name Phil, at all. Phil, and then uh, the one I, love, one I love is this, uh, this uh, ambassador to the Ukraine that he got rid of and the tape that was released of him saying, fire get rid of get her, rid fire her, take her out. Yeah, get her out of the Ukraine. No, take her out. It. He was using yeah. a gangsterism to tell them what to do with her. Well, that's your interpretation. Well, what does it sound <laughs> like to you? If I'm writing a script about the mob and they're going to kill somebody, <laughs> the guy who the guy who's ordering the hit says, "Take him out." This wasn't the mob. He had. Oh, a really? Stan was that. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. What so wasn't the, what wasn't the mob? Well, because what was Trump isn't was, mob. That, look, that, Trump that isn't was, mob. No, that ambassador. Trump was, isn't mob. Was talking sla uh, 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 was talking negatively about Trump, blocking his agenda, and uh, uh, making. Uh, I guess Zelensky didn't want her there either, so uh, he wanted her get her out, pack her shit up. Put her on but the last term yeah. was take her out. He well, sounded like a gangster when well, he said that. He sounded that way, but you, you can't prove that that's what it no, was. No, uh, he sounded that way because Trump is a gangster, Phil. Not a gangster. You know, uh, he had Phil, a deal. Phil, he had a mob lawyer. He had a mob lawyer, Phil. Yeah. Well, if I was going to have you a listen player, to that whole conversation, it sounds like it was in the back room somewhere in the in the bellows of New York. That's what you get when you elect somebody from Queens. That's right. Well, I want to hear more of those tapes, and I want to hear uh, that uh, that the Ukrainian guy testify, and I want to hear Bolton testify, and I want to hear all these people get their ducks in a row because I think when they're through with it, a lot of these senators are going to be running for the fucking hills and convicting him. Plus, you need uh, what's the percentage that you need? 
uh, I don't think that they're going to get that. I 60. think I, I don't think it's it, it's sixty something. Is it? What is it? What, yeah, what is it, Jeff? Jeff seven is it? Chimp, Jeff, do you know? I'm not sure. Mm. Okay, it looked like Jeff was trying Some to say that. Number. Sixty-seven sticks in my head. I don't know. Well, it could happen. You know, if the if if people come in and and they say things that <clears throat> seem to resound with the with the Senate, the Senate, uh, I think it could well be that they will. Uh, I, you know, I almost all of the senators that are going to vote for acquittal don't feel that the accusations rise to the level of impeachment. And that's what you're really going to deal with. Did he do something wrong? I guess so. You know, uh, well, what, 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 in the case of Bill Clinton, did that rise to the level of impeachment? Yes, because it was uh, perjury. Oh, I see. But this is OK because uh, you're holding up a foreign government uh, for goods on your political opponent. Uh, you're saying it's for goods on the political opponent. He's saying he's investigating corruption. So that that's oh the well, it's nice to know that we have a detective and, and an with investigator an in our midst. The people's business. And if he did find out that they had corruption, he could have used the money for the wall. They weren't. He wasn't oh, asking God, about corruption, particularly in the after event, in the in the aftermath when all the shit hit the fan. He started saying, "I was trying to root out corruption in Ukraine, which is really Ukraine's job." But I was trying to run. But no, there was none of that in that conversation. It was all about Biden. It wasn't about corruption in his country. I don't know that you really understand what the conversation was because you still. I heard the con. Yeah, I read the, the what the conversation was, or at least what the contemporaneous. Us, not, said. What? What? He said us, not me. Now you're listening to Schiff's uh, explanation. No, I, which, I, I know he said. Do what you, Trump do, says. Read he, the transcript. It yeah, says Biden it, right in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't. He wasn't asking questions about. Uh, Oh, I don't know, some mob character in uh, in in the Ukraine. He was asking about Joe Biden Crowd and the, in particular the Hunter Biden. Yeah, because he was trying to find out what happened in the two thousand. Oh, what are you arguing? Well, the two thousand sixteen election. Uh, One they, second, you're saying he's he's investigating. He's trying to stop corruption, and then we bring up Biden. He said, oh, "Yeah, he's he's talking about Biden." So you're, that, you're that, talking that two sides. Part of you're just you're just wearing blinders, and you don't want to see that Biden is a bad guy. He's a bad he, operator, he, and his son. He might be, but but but, but, but the son. Well, yeah. When I look at uh, when I look at Joe Biden, I see a, a real gangster. Yeah. You know, when I look at Trump, I see a real gangster. I see yeah, a guy who talks in gangster yes. parlance, who hires gangster lawyers. I mean, I mean, fucking Rudy Giuliani's a gangster. I sent you the video, which you said, and Biden stood there and said, "I told those guys in the Ukraine if they didn't fire that guy who was investigating Burisma, I'm going to uh, be on a plane with a billion and a quarter uh, in six hours." I, you know, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about Biden. Well, for whatever reason, the president was holding up uh, was holding up uh, help. Uh, financial help and aid to a country that had been authorized by Congress, and he was basing holding that up on, will you do us a favor? Uh, no, yeah. Biden and Obama held up a billion and a Forget quarter. Forget about Obama. He has nothing to do with this. You're, you're creating a whataboutism. No, it's not a whataboutism. No, no, no. Okay, so if it was, was it wrong for Obama to do it? Yes. Then it's wrong for Trump to but do it. Then it's wrong for Trump to do it. It's not impeachable. Well, nobody tried to impeach Obama. And by the way, for a good amount, for a good percentage of the time that Obama was in power, the Republicans were in power as well. And they and didn't it, impeach him. OK, it, so it, if if uh, but if you're saying what Obama did was wrong, then what Trump yeah. did was wrong. Yes. The two wrongs don't make the and right. two wrongs don't make a right. That's what my mother used to say, but I, he did it first. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, by the way, how does my mixer sound? My new mixer. Sounds like the old mixer. Yeah, I can't tell the difference. It's an eleven hundred dollar difference in price. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, Personas is the company whose motto is "There's a sucker born every minute." So you know. <laughs> well, no, 
Shonen wow. uh, could uh, you could uh, do a whole band. You could run a church. Right, uh, right. What what where are you working out of? Your bathroom or something. I don't know where you are. <laughs> you, <laughs> you hear a ball flush. That's my mother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I didn't know that these things existed. Uh, you know, I had the Behringer. I liked it. It's just that it, it was Behringer making was fine. I still have it here. I haven't been able to find a place where I have room to put it. Yeah, I think you it's have huge. To it's huge. Yeah, it's the same size as the uh, personas. You know, I mean, it's something that I would use in a radio studio, for instance. It's it's that big, yeah. uh, and uh, I like I needed something here when I replaced the old one, that you know fit the footprint. You yeah, know, and and didn't impede on the whole the whole thing. And I really wish they made them smaller, to be honest with you. But I also like them with slider pots, for instance. I don't like the knobs. That's you know, this has got knobs, huh? Uh, this has got knobs, yeah. just like I think there's some slider pots on the Behringer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are all sliders. Yeah, but I like using sliders. But anyway, uh, so you know, I mean, this whole thing's going to continue. I think we're going to get down to a vote on whether they can show subpoena the uh, the uh, people. And I think that that's going to happen. What, that that I is going to happen. You yeah. Know? I, I, uh, matter of fact, McConnell said tonight that he does not have the votes to uh, to stop that. Yeah. So it looks like so. Uh, Phil gonna... Phil's wrong again. By the way. Well, uh, what you mean? Um, yeah. Admit you're wrong. Admit you were wrong. Admit you were wrong, Phil. I don't remember uh, if Phil, I said. Admit you were wrong. Uh, I'm always wrong, okay? <laughs> okay. So everybody, you can have a drink. Okay? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, it, it, well, you know, with this uh, current uh, book-selling guy, uh, oh. you know, he, yeah. the, guy, the guy is basically trying to sell books. We'll see what he actually says once he's on the stand. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna interview him in, uh, in closed session uh, in, initially. And uh, we'll see what he's got. Well, he was there, you know, so, uh, you know, it becomes a matter of he said, she said, I guess. You but know, it's also, but... So, you know, um, uh, Dick, uh, what's his name that does that podcast? He used to be in uh, um, um, in uh, Clinton's uh, uh, advisor. Dick, Dick uh, Powell? No. Uh, oh, I... So uh, he said, you know. You can say certain words, and you can interpret them two different ways. Uh, uh, so the way he did it with the inflection that he used, it, it's the same words but different interpretations. So the guy can say, yeah, I heard him say this, but it isn't necessarily what well, they really... Well, it, it, it's a case of what they call Rashomon, which was an old Japanese tale about dead people who are talking about the uh, 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 various people are coming back and talking about the death of somebody and they each have a different story okay yeah. uh, uh, and and yes i know how that can happen but absent the interpretation the actions can only be taken one way in my opinion and that is that this man basically caught uh, 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 this man basically committed treason uh, I I don't think so. I think he was uh, protecting the American interests. Really, uh, mm. up country. I feel wow. I feel a lot safer knowing that. Hey, Phil. He cut off aid to the Palestinians because of uh, uh, what they're doing, and uh, and nobody's trying to impeach him over that. Well, I would. Uh, anyway, let me start the theme here. What? There we go. There, and I even had it at a low level so it wouldn't go crazy. Well, it's been very nice. Thanks to all of you for not calling. Uh, but we had a nice crowd here, and we had a good discussion, and it was fun and full of frivolity. And one of them was Phil Meyer. Uh, he is the asshole that we, you know so well. And uh, also there's Jeff, who is known as the sweet, wonderful, older guy on our program. Older guy, how about me? You know, I'm at death's door, for Christ's sake. Uh, Tony Magno, thank you so much. And, of course, Kevin, always great to see you. You're always the, the a font of wisdom, as it were. Anyway, why don't you all kind of give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave goodbye to you. All right, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. There's our, uh, our citizens panel for tonight. 
Sorry that we had some problems in the uh, in the beginning of the show with the uh, audio. I don't know what happens. You know, it's all it's all a mystery. But we got it solved, and uh, that's all that matters. And as a result, had I think ourselves a fine little little program. Coming up next is. Uh, our uh, good friend Jack Bishop has got a thing called The Intersection. So uh, you can call him, those of you who didn't call me tonight, and uh, you can give him a call, and he'll be up next. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye bye <laughs>